the shark, one of the creatures most feared by man. This one and six others are cruising waters in central London, striking terror into the hearts of millions. But their home isn't the River Thames, rather the London Aquarium, housed in this former government building. But who are these creatures of the deep? Are they really the man-eaters that films like Jaws would have us believe? Do they prey on innocent victims or are humans actually their worst enemy? Two brave souls who are about to find out are Daniel Benham and Jamie Oliver. They work as marine and freshwater specialists at the aquarium. Um, we're going to be using just standard scuba gear. Um, we're staying in the tank for about half an hour to an hour um, so, we, so we can stay down there and, and, and clean. And they do know when, a, when somebody that hasn't been in there before, you know, they, they can pick up on the, the sort of the nervous tension. Yeah. They, they've got sensors in their nose and they, they can pick up, you know, a heartbeat. They can feel the heartbeat, supposedly, when you're in there. So I'm sure, I'm sure they know when, when something new is, someone new is in there. They're about to come face to face with one of the ocean's most revered inhabitants. One sudden move could upset the sharks, who have highly sophisticated senses. Jamie and Daniel prepare to enter the aquarium's most impressive display, and although this is a scary exercise, it's part of their drive to show sharks are deeply misunderstood creatures. Sharks can detect one drop of blood in thousands of litres of water and are perfectly adapted to a predatory lifestyle. They're the ocean's equivalent to Africa's big cats, apex predators at the top of the ocean's food chain. They're an essential part of marine life. The first time in the Pacific tank was, uh, it was very nerve-wracking. My heart was, was going ten to the dozen. Got down there, um, Jamie, the head diver, and I, we, we knelt in the corner, um, just seeing how the sharks would respond. And because, because I was quite nervous, I was obviously giving off sort of stress signals. Daniel feels the terrifying image of sharks needs a good PR makeover. He wants the public to know that sharks don't just attack on a whim. Like most animals, they only attack when they're hungry. Both men, however, still look out for one another. Shark attacks get wide coverage and are often sensationalized. When a great white fatally attacked a bather near Perth, Australia in 2000, the newspapers had a feeding frenzy. But what is the likelihood of a shark attack? Statistics show more people die each year from a vending machine falling on their heads than are killed by sharks. A lot of people have a misconception about sharks being these ferocious killers. I think films like Jaws have, have painted quite a bad picture of them. Um, there are instances where Sharks have attacked humans, but generally it's a, a, a case of mistaken identity. They feed on seals and, and turtles naturally, and often a, a bather or a surfer looks um, in their silhouette looks like either a, a, a seal or a, a, a turtle. One reason for mistaken identity is the greater number of bathers in the water every year. This, along with overfishing, means that humans are trespassing more and more into the shark's territory. In fact, humans are more of a threat to sharks than the other way round. This has left many sharks on the endangered species list. Not all sharks are acutely predatory. The whale shark, which is the biggest fish in the sea, feeds on plankton. But unfortunately, this gentle giant who lives in tropical waters has been hunted almost to extinction. This one was caught off Taiwan in 1996, and when it was cut open, 300 whale shark young were discovered inside. Some were as large as a half a meter. Shark meat is a delicacy in some parts of Asia, and as many as three and a half million sharks are hunted every year. Jamie and Daniel believe understanding who sharks really are is the key to saving the species. 
their efforts as animal helpers appear to be working. They believe people are responding by changing their attitudes and breaking down the stereotype. Truly understanding the shark will only come from bringing these creatures closer to the public.